What's up everyone, welcome back to Funnel Hackers. My name's Matt, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Twitter. Now, Twitter is something that's been kind of irrelevant, especially in the social media world lately. Everything like Snapchat, Instagram, and even Facebook has taken off a little bit more than I think Twitter. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about if Twitter is still relevant and if you can get any value out of it. So without further ado, let's dive into my computer and take a look. All right, so for the sake of this video, I created a Twitter account for the Funnel Hackers Dream Team and basically just gonna show you a couple things within Twitter. Probably not gonna use it that much, but I will talk about some negatives first and then I will talk about some positives to Twitter and if it's actually useful to use in 2018 or 2019. The first thing I wanna talk about is the Google Trends bar. Now, if you guys don't know, Google Trends is an awesome place to type in something and see uh, basically the relevancy of it, right? You can see how things spike and they go up and down. And so for this, I typed in Twitter. Now you have the option to choose basically 2004 to the present, which is what I chose. You can choose the past hour, past four hours, past day, so on and so forth, and see kind of you know whether it goes up or down. Twitter, I believe, was created in 2009. So obviously, we're gonna have this long line from 2004 to 2008. And then obviously, 2009, we're gonna start to see the climb because Twitter started to become relevant and a thing. So as you can see, there was a steady climb all the way up until 2012, even 2013, like January 2013 looks like it was at its high. And then as after that, you can see it started to go down in February. So as you can see, it started to go down in 2013. And now, actually, I should say starting in 2015, July of 2015, it's kind of gone up and down, up and down, all the way up until today, November 2018. So this gives you an awesome uh, idea of whether it's relevant or not. As you can kind of see, it's not gone down all the way, but uh, it is definitely gone down quite a bit since 2013. So that's something to keep in mind. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the number of active users monthly, right? Now this is a key word, monthly, worldwide, from the first quarter, which is the first three months of 2010, to the third quarter. Uh, so we're talking July, August, and September. So as you can see in 2010, it had 30 million users. Remember, keep this in mind, these are in the millions. It started to climb, right? Of course, 2014, it continued to get users, and now it's got 336 million active users. This is like the highest point. It's dropped off a little bit. Now in uh, the third quarter of 2018, we are at 326 million, right? So this is a good sign. This is good to see uh, the number of active users that are monthly that tells us that there's actually, you know, potential. One of the things that I wanna talk about that's a negative to Twitter is you'll hear a lot of people saying it's, it's noisy, there's a lot of people, there's just too many tweets going out daily, which is true. And it's really hard to get your message out to, you know, your followers. Uh, really what you want to talk to them about, whether it's selling something, getting them to retweet something. It, it's just tough because you get drowned out in so many of the tweets because people are tweeting every single second of the day. The second thing that I want to talk about is Twitter is full of bots. Now I'm going to pull up a picture here and I'm going to show you guys uh, just what I mean by bots and spam. Okay, so this is from my personal Twitter account uh, dating back to 2015. This was when I was really active on Twitter. Uh, I was posting lots and I was really engaging. Uh, but this is what would happen, right? So whenever you follow somebody, you know, you expect to get a follow back half the time at least maybe. And and a lot of times what would happen is, you know, I would follow somebody and Twitter has this thing where you can automate messages. And so people kind of abuse this thing where, you know, instead of making it a personal message with maybe someone's name in it, welcoming them to your page, you get something like this. And this is just a screenshot from uh, my messages on my personal account. You guys can just kind of look through these messages and just see the spam, right? There's just a lot of unnecessary content like this. This doesn't make me want to click on it. Like this person just sends me a link. This person sends me a link. At least, you know, say hi, right? At least say hi to somebody. Maybe say thank you for following me or something that's going to make someone feel like you're not just a bot, right? So these people are just having this message on automation where it just sends it out and it's like, this is not even gonna be opened. If anything, I'm just gonna delete this message, not even open it, not even click on the link, not even come close because the message is already gonna be deleted before I even open the message. I think it's really spammy and you know, a lot of times when you follow people, they'll have this set on where they send you an automated message 
and it's just, it looks gross, right? Nobody wants to see that kind of message. And if anything, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get kind of offended. And if this person, you know, doesn't follow me back and they send this message to me, I'm immediately gonna unfollow them right after that. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is the algorithm. Twitter has a very tough algorithm and uh, it's something that is not like Instagram or maybe YouTube, right? Where you're posting certain content and your videos get to the top of the browser page by basically putting in keywords. With Twitter, it's it's really tough because you know you have to search by relevancy and a lot of things are going to be shown to you by votes of popularity, right? So uh, this is trends for you, they assume. They're just giving me a bunch of popular things over here, obviously, Cyber Monday. It's kind of cluttered and it's hard to find specific things unless you go up in this search bar and you search for specific things, right? It's tough to find stuff that's you know actually going to intrigue you, right? There's a lot of different scattered uh, things all over Twitter and it just, you get really lost and, you know, it gets boring sometimes because there's just constant things on Twitter that you don't even want to watch or you don't even want to look at. Another tough thing is the amount of characters that you can tweet. Now, Twitter hasn't upgraded this ever since, I mean, I don't, as long as I can remember, it's been 140 characters. So if I were to type in a message, so let's say I wanted to copy this and paste it into Twitter. Let's see if this is over 140 characters. Look, it cuts us off right here, says I'm over. What this is going to do is it's going to really cut off your ability to be creative. It forces you to kind of be in a, you know, restricted box of only being able to say a certain amount of words. Uh, this is why, you know, a lot of people will tweet pictures of maybe quotes or words. That way they get their point across. But it sucks because you'd think they would have updated it by now. I mean, you can post on Facebook and you have been able to post on Facebook ever since it was created. You can post books on there, basically. I'm not, I can't remember how many uh, characters are allowed on Facebook, but Twitter, you would think, would have upgraded this by now, and they haven't. So it really cuts you off creatively, and I think that's something that's a big turnoff when it comes to Twitter. So now that I've talked about the negatives, I want to talk about some positives, okay? Twitter is... Uh, you know, still got some good things left in it. And I think it's got a little juice in the tank. So I was clearing up some old emails today on one of my older accounts and I came across this. But what I was noticing was Twitter had just continued to send me loads and loads and loads of emails. So when I signed up for my first account, I must have, you know, opted in to have them email me notifications. And, you know, a lot of people are going to do that. And I think it's really good because uh, someone, it's going to notify you about other people tweeting stuff. If I'm really active on email, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to see these daily. And if anything, I might be willing to click on one of these things and actually check it out. I think Twitter does a really good job of saying, hey, look, you're missing out. You need to come back and check this out. Another thing that I think you can do with Twitter is direct message. Now, I've talked about this a little bit in a previous YouTube video about Instagram, but I do think that Twitter uh, has a very similar capability. So over here, we have send a message, get a message, right? So start a conversation. You can basically type in anyone's name. Don't be a spam bot in the sense of spamming people with links and stuff that they're not gonna wanna watch or be interested in. So if I wanted to send somebody a message, obviously you're gonna add their name in here and I would make it something super personal, right? Maybe greeting them saying, hey, my name's so-and-so, this is what I'm doing, thank you so much for following me and keep it short and sweet, right? Don't make it look like it's just spam, get them to open it and get them to respond because once they respond, now you've engaged in conversation. Now you guys can actually talk about stuff and now they're more likely to click on a link that you send them or maybe watch a video if you wanna show them or like more of your tweets and maybe even retweet. That's one thing that I think is awesome about Twitter and Vine. I wish Vine was still here today, but it sucks that it's gone. The ability to retweet or revine something is so powerful because you can't do this with Instagram. You can't do this with Facebook. Okay, with Facebook, the ability to basically retweet something is sharing it to your page. It's a lot of people don't share stuff, but when you do, it's awesome. So in conclusion, I do not think Twitter is dead. If you actually use it in the right ways like I've talked about in this video, I think that you can still make an impact on a lot of people when you use it correctly. I think messages is going to be the biggest thing that you're gonna get out of this, right? So when you go follow people and they follow you back, don't hit them with a spam message, hit them with a, a message that's got their name in it, personalized, down to the point, hey, thanks for following me, 
John or hey, Mary, thank you for following me. Hopefully you like my content, something short and sweet. That way you can follow up later and maybe be like, hey, I just made a YouTube video. You wanna check it out? Or hey, you know, I have an Instagram, you know, do you wanna go follow me and I'll follow you? Something like that. So no, Twitter's not dead if you use it correctly. So go out there and start killing it. All right, so after taking a look at Twitter and seeing what it was in the past versus the present, you guys can probably get a good idea of whether or not to use Twitter today. If you guys have any questions or comments about the video, please drop them in the comment box below. If you guys found this video informing and like it, please throw me a like, that would be awesome. And if you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that button right there. We'd love to have you on the Dream Team. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.